the statistics are surprising. African Americans have the highest incidence, death rate, and shortest survival time for most cancers. In particular, they are almost twice as likely as Caucasian Americans to be diagnosed and die from a blood cancer called multiple myeloma. Joining me today is Dr. Craig Cole and multiple myeloma patient Cheryl Boyce to help raise awareness of multiple myeloma within the African American community. Good afternoon, Dr. Cole and Cheryl. Thank you for joining me today. Hi. Thank you. Thank you. Now, um, Dr. Cole, what exactly is multiple myeloma and risk factors? Multiple myeloma is a cancer of the bone marrow. Um, so the bone marrow is the blood factory that makes the, all the blood, including the red blood cells, the white blood cells, and actually the bone marrow also makes the blood plasma. Um, so it's the, bo the blood factory, and inside the bone marrow there are different types of cells, including plasma cells, which again produce the blood plasma. Just like any other part of the body, the plasma cells can become cancerous, and when those, cancer, or when those plasma cells turn cancerous inside the bone marrow, that's called multiple myeloma, a cancer of the plasma cells that live in the bone marrow. They, those plasma cells have a affinity or a, a like for a, a moving to bones, and so unlike other types of cancer that can metastasize to different, bone, or to different organs, myeloma has a, an affinity for the bones, and so myeloma um, frequently causes multiple holes in the bones or bone lesions, and that's the multiple part. So multiple means multiple bone lesions, myeloma means originating from the bone marrow. The risk factors for myeloma, um, the, one of the predominant ones is, uh, just like you had mentioned, that it is as a higher incidence in African Americans as, com as compared to other ethnicities. And actually for people of, of, of Inuit and um, Native American um, descent, the disease is less common. And so one of the chief um, uh, um, pr um, risk factors for myeloma is ethnicity. Also, it's a disease that occurs as people get older. So children are rarely, if ever, affected by myeloma. And the average um, age of, the t of people at the time of diagnosis is, uh, is about 70 years of age. So it's a disease of older persons, primarily African Americans, and slightly more in men than in women. Now, why is it that more African Americans um, are twice as likely to be diagnosed um, compared to Caucasian Americans? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. And to be honest, we, we don't quite know the, the answer to that. Unlike other cancers, it is not the racial disparity is not due to um, social economics. It's not due to diet, um, weight, ex um, exercise, uh, uh, tobacco and the disease is not hereditary. So all of the usual risk factors that we attribute to the disparity between races for a cancer, myeloma doesn't have any of those. And so we have yet to find, to identify the specific cause of the difference between um, the incidence between the races. It's important for the African American community to know about multiple myeloma. Um, I think that having an, an awareness um, and being able to engage um, the, their doctors regarding this disease is, is critical. And that's why we're happy to work with uh, Takeda to spread awareness. The only way that we can really um, affect this disease is to be aware of it and to ask our physicians, ask your doctor question, question your doctor about how you feel. And if you say, gosh, I'm, I'm having pain um, that's new, having fatigue that's new, you should ask your doctor, maybe I should be tested or I should be tested for multiple myeloma. It's only a two blood test or a blood test and a urine test that are the screening tests for myeloma. So the kind of the, the key thing is awareness of the disease and the empowerment of people to ask their physicians uh, to be tested for it. Yes, absolutely. Now, uh, Cheryl, can you please share a little bit more about your experience with multiple myeloma? Uh, and I kind of conform to the, the scenario that, that Dr. Cole has painted. I started off uh, with just tremendous fatigue, and it, it was an unusual fatigue that did not respond to sleep. Uh, it was a heavy, dark feeling, uh, very out of the ordinary. And I also started having bone pain uh, in my lower back. And so I had an appointment with my doctor for a prescription refill and took it as an opportunity to share with him these unusual symptoms I was having. 
um, and he ordered a, a blood test and it showed an increased level of protein. And so I got the diagnosis of multiple myeloma, my, multiple myeloma and started my treatment journey uh, that spanned at several years. Um, although it's, an, it's not a curable disease, it is a treatable disease. Wow, thank you for sharing that. And then lastly, Dr. Cole, where can people go to get more information? Um, you know, just like Cheryl mentioned, um, being empowered and having more information is kind of key. Um, being able to communicate with your do doctor um, about this disease um, is, is really important. Everybody knows about melanoma and breast cancer and colon cancer, and adding myeloma to your knowledge armamentarium is, is kind of a, is critical. So people can go to mymultiplemyeloma.com um, to get more information. And also that uh, serves as a jumping point to different websites, including support groups for uh, multiple myeloma, uh, research uh, being done, clinical trial websites, um, and it's a fantastic place to start. Thank you. And remember, it is important to get the facts about multiple myeloma and its effects on the African American community. To learn more, please visit www.mymultiplemyeloma.com. Thank you so much again, you two, for joining me today. Thank, Thank you. you.